fellow traders and welcome to the channel if you're new welcome all the new subscribers I appreciate your support and today's topic was voted on it's been uh, about a week since I started the poll and didn't get very many votes but the majority said that they wanted to see a bull trade start to finish and kind of just see the whole process as if I were to approach it from start and I go over each little aspect of what I'm looking at. So right now I've got the New Zealand dollar, US dollar pulled up. Uh, it's one that I'm not overly familiar with, so uh, it'll be a little bit more fair. I know I usually stick to the Euro USD, but there's a few things about trading that are misconstrued. We'll get into that in another video. And I'm going to do this with the New Zealand dollar to basically do the same thing as I do on any other trade. And we're going to see how the system works. I'm going to walk you through the way I'm setting up with the risk, the approach, how I'm looking at my entries, uh, what type of you know things I'm looking for to exit, so on and so forth. Uh, there's a lot of uh, videos on the channel so far, and there's kind of a blend of those in the way I trade I kinda just do situational trading but we're gonna do some replay and I'm using the five minute chart to have a little bit more fine tuning of the candle control I don't need an hour's worth of candles uh, really strewing, uh, basically kinda skewing the results a little bit so hopefully this will help me get better entries and exits but I'm gonna be using the trading view back tester for this so uh, just to keep it simple so first to start with I'll just go into replay mode and we will go to a random bar see where we are uh, July the 7th and 24 and we're gonna zoom out and take a look at what we have <laughs> so the first thing I normally do is I'm gonna zoom out and I'm gonna look at the overall picture see what's kinda happening what's going on where and just an overall observance of what price is doing kind of look at how far it's moving so on and so forth the whole idea is you can't know where you're going unless you know where you've been and we kind of stayed and consolidated towards the bottom down here a little bit and notice how we've had several reactions kind of in similar spots so that's where I kind of sort out and get into finding my levels. So I'm going to start by searching out some levels and try to find a pattern. And I'm going to give them a little bit of distance. I don't want to be super stacked together. We could say there's a lot of these levels in one place. But generally I'm looking for the most obvious ones like we see we have a wick here. So I'm going to just go ahead and spot the level there. And notice how clean we line up. There's a flip here. It bounced off of there several times. And notice how we're starting to form that pattern. So go check out the support and resistance video to see what I'm coming up with here and how I'm kind of arriving at some of these levels. I think I'm going to look right there for that one. And then go a little bit in the middle there. That seems a little more prominent. And let's go ahead and start with the next step of the trade. And I'm going to analyze what I'm using for risk. Now, I like to generally use, if I'm using a simple style, which is what I'm going to show in this video, um, where you're using a stop loss in place. Um, there, The way I will typically handle this... Uh, let me just pull... Oh, I had it right there. Let me get this on the chart. We'll set it up. <laughs> and to figure our risk, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to look at the maximum amount I'm going to risk. So in this section of the video, it's going to be a little more in-depth. Uh, there's going to be a little bit more to it than just a basic risk this much, put this size. Um, there's sort of a method or setup to it that kind of helps you create an advantage. So let's go ahead and go over that now. Uh, one thing I will do generally is I will look at 
the way price is forming, see how far it generally moves, look at how far apart the levels are. So to start with, I would measure and see how far apart these are. And we might need to go a little bit bigger or look for some different larger levels. We're getting kind of close there. And it is the five minute chart overall. We probably want to ignore some of these in between levels. So we're looking for something like this. The further apart the levels are, the longer the trades are and fewer the opportunities. But you want to allow enough room for risk. So we're looking at about 30 to 35. So I'm going to risk, I would say, about 40 pips maximum. So that's going to be from one level to just beyond another level. And the whole idea behind that is if we start to get the trade wrong, um, I'll explain that in just a minute. I probably should have went over that first. Let me just go over that first. Sorry, I don't have a script. I'm just kind of going with it. But let's say, for example, we wait for price to come here because generally I'll recommend trading from around these levels we've spotted. That's going to give us a couple of different advantages in regards to controlling our trade, controlling our risk, and controlling our management. Now, ideally, the way uh, the situation would work is you're going to look for the next level up. Let's see if we got something here. Probably need to... Right there. And then you are going to ideally want to target that next level as your target if it's going correctly in your favor. Yeah, I figured it was a little higher. So we're a little bit off on that level there, no problem. I think it needs to fit there. So I'm going to wait for price to retrace to this level here, take a trade. If this trade starts to move in my favor, then we have a potential of about 32 to 35 pips. And we ideally want to take more than 15, if at all possible. Now, in some instances, we may take interest, entry here. We may get some drawdown. The trade could come down a little bit more against us and then go back up. And we're looking at the trade coming as far as down here to risk our amount that we want to risk so we have a potential where it could come down a little bit and draw down and react in our favor if the price were to come down start reacting in our favor a little bit or not pull down far but then start to drift back down then instead of letting it go the full 35 to 40 pips that we're risking we want to close it shorter than that we want to exercise our right to come out of a trade that's not going our way and the ultimate result in the end is going to be a group of trades and this is going to be the ideal focus so trading one trade to the next it shouldn't be a focus of a single trade it's a focus of a group or collection of trades so you're going to have a handful of trades that do well some may do better than our initial target you know if it's still going and just rips through and keeps pushing upwards then, of course, we want to try to hang on to it for longer. But if it's going wrong, we're way up here. We don't want to let it get way down here. We don't want to even hit our stop, if at all possible. But that stop is there just in case we get some surprise event or some surprise movement. And it's just faster than we can keep up with or if we look away from the chart. Um, a lot of times I will often trade the hourly and I don't have a lot of time to stare at the charts, but I am looking at it periodically, um, usually a few times per hour if I've got a trade on, especially if I've just taken an entry, I may try to observe a little bit and see if it's going to start moving my way or not. Um, but that's the general premise and idea of what we're trying to do. And we're going to look at the overall market of what it's doing. So right now, I would say it's moving upwards. So I would probably wait for price to get to this level and take a long trade. <coughs> Oi. Excuse me.
nose has been kind of getting a little stuffy today. I hope I'm not getting sick. But apologies. But I'm going to wait for price to come down to this level that I have marked. It's been verified. It's proven. It's been hit multiple times. And I'm going to see if price is going to come down and just react upwards. If it does, then I'm going to let it continue and see what happens near the next level. If it starts to kind of show reactions like it may turn around, I'm going to cut the trade off. If not, I'm going to let it continue going. Now, one thing to keep in mind is you're always looking for a reversal, either a reversal of a retracement in a continuation trade. So even though it's labeled a continuation trade, you still will be targeting a reversal. So we're going to be looking for certain things like price came down and then can't go down anymore and starts to move back upwards. And we're going to just let it flow as much as it can. So remember that the market is always constantly moving up and down. So we don't want to just rely on one candle or a little bit of one thing or another. We want to try to keep an eye on the overall picture at all times because if it's moving upwards, even though we can zoom in on it and it looks like it might be reversing to the downside, we're going to watch right here. And if it slows down and shows respect for this level, then we may take a long or we may just go ahead. And what I will typically advise to do so you don't think about it too much is just go ahead and enter as soon as price reaches that level. And you've got your markings for your risk and reward. Your next level is the target if your trade is going your way. And if it's not, then you want to try to cut it at halfway or less. So we want to try, if at all possible, if it starts to break downward, we want to cut it somewhere in here. If it doesn't react in our favor, if it starts coming down, even if it comes down 17 to 20 pips, it's no problem. Now, in some cases, I'd recommend to see if it would drift back upwards to come back to where it broke out from and cut to take a smaller loss. But the idea in the end is to create an average of between that is better than one to one. But I don't really recommend trying to try uh, go for more than a two to one in a risk reward ratio. Now, this is an overall average. So some tra trades you're going to take. And you're going to make, you know, maybe 1.5R, 1.9R, 1.3R. Because not all trades are going to go to target. This is an ideal world situation that ideally is just, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't happen. It doesn't work. Um, you don't want to sit here and try to lock yourself to specific targets and goals. Um, if it's going up and it's coming shy of this level and starts to come down, we could decide to close it here instead of waiting for the target. The whole idea is that in the end we're going to make, we're going to win half the time and we're going to lose half the time. And our advantage comes in by closing out the losers before they reach the stop and ideally hanging on to our winners until they reach the next level and possibly beyond. Now, a little bit of experience is required, a little bit of practice is required, and I know backtesting is heavily talked about, but I kind of advise just getting a demo account and trying out this stuff on a demo account with live price. The reason I say that is because while we're backtesting, even though we know the date, we don't exactly remember what's happening back on the 9th of July 24. We could go Google it, look it up, so on and so forth. Um, but in, in, you know, the reality of backtesting is we're looking at a chart, which is the most common thing that we're going to use. And yeah, we can kind of look at the news events coming up, things like that. Um, but we don't know exactly how the world was that day. I mean, we can have a general idea. And so when you're doing this on live price, it make you're much more involved in what's going on. You understand you know much better the impact of the news and what's actually happening around you but I'm gonna go ahead and run this and we're gonna just kinda overlook that little detail and let's go ahead and start talking about risk planning so we know what we're ideally going to do if price comes here we're gonna take a long 
because price is still moving up. And I want to risk about $50 per tray. And I'm going to use about a 40 pip ultimate stop loss. So, <laughs> you know, worst case scenario, if we don't close it, if we try to hang on to it at 40 pips, we are absolutely done. And that's a little bit wider than these levels. And ideally, we want to try to win 40 pips at least if we do. But more often than not, the way the market moves, um, over time you'll kind of discover that it will tend to pull back several times over one long move that just continues for a while. So um, trying to pick an end in a major reversal versus just trying to catch a continuation reversal uh, it's going to be far easier and your chances are far better. And especially if you're using the levels to try to catch your trades and catch your entries and so forth, you're going to minimize your losses and maximize your potential wins when you get those. So let's go ahead and finish setting this up. I'm going to use the example of a $1,000 account. And we're just going to take some simple trades. I'm going to risk $50 US across... 40 pips and this is going to calculate our lot size for us not really too much looking at that I do need to change that to a fixed size though so it will take our setting and if we are looking to risk 48 to 50 dollars we're going to be trading with a 0.12 so uh, grab the ATR calculator if you're interested uh, what else do I have on here don't need that volume is kind of pointless still um so it's called risk calculator but just type in scalpers toolkit you could also find that on my link in my bio on youtube channel but that's the script for this calculator to kind of keep up with your risk management and size management automatically and it'll update with changing price so i like to use that for quick estimates and I say estimates because like I've, like I've already started out explaining, these are, you know, if you're going to take exactly 40 pips of a stop loss and exactly 120 pips of a win every single time, that's an ideal world scenario that will cost you more than you make. So we have to kind of be observant, adapt, and flow with the market. If the market is trying to turn, we want to try to identify that and either save our wins or cut our losses as soon as we have an educated guess of what might happen next and in trading that's all you're doing is making an educated guess you'll get a lot of experience as the more you see charts uh, the more you see certain things happening like I like to point out the arches a lot of times so when you see curves in the support and resistance overall a lot of times that's an indication of a turnaround it doesn't always point out everything and you can't always trust it there's a curve here that broke upwards so just like anything else I mean everything is 50 50 you're never gonna find a perfect system just take a guess so let's go ahead and start the trading start the process and see where we end up so we got a new day so I'm gonna pop through a few minutes let the spread kinda go out and then set our size correctly so we can have our correct risk and like we talked about going to buy and I'm just going to set that stop loss for my maximum loss amount it doesn't matter I don't care about lows I don't care about anything I'm going straight to that amount that I chose to risk and ideally I would like to cut it somewhere in here if I'm wrong so then I'm looking at losing half of the maximum loss now should we get some crazy event where price just plummets well then our stop will do its job and save us from blowing the account now even though this target may not seem like it's enough because of this here remember our uh, this is our worst case scenario the ideal scenario is to come out somewhere in here so even if we came out losing $24, if we're trying to win on average of $35 to $40 per trade, we make better than one-to-one. -one. 
we naturally will hit 50% as long as we do not fight and try to say that we are going to be right no matter what. You try that fight, you will lose it every time. Just play with statistics, let them work in your favor, let them do their job, take your guess, it's 50-50, and by simply doing this here, planning out your trade, looking at the values, despite everybody else telling you to ignore the money, that's kind of important. I mean, it's part of the end goal. So, I mean, you have to pay attention to it a little bit. So, we're in this trade long. You know the plan. Where If we're starting to break down and price is just coming downward, we cut it here. We lose about 20, 25 bucks. But if it goes correct, we're looking to make somewhere in the neighborhood of 40. So, that gives us our better than one to one and will make us profitable. That's just simple math. So, let's go ahead and play this forward and see where we wind up. I'll try not to get impatient, which is something I'm very susceptible to when doing some back testing. And you'll notice these are five minute candles. We're going to sometimes be holding these trades for a little while. Even though they look like large motions, they're not going to be super crazy. It's not going to be like some of these where you see options where they're buying a couple contracts and making a few thousand. It doesn't quite work that speedily. So that's one thing to keep in mind. You don't want to jump in and out of these trades based on one or two candles. We have entered this trade. Price has stayed in this area for roughly about two to three hours on this chart so far. Let me zoom in so we can see the candles. But overall, it hasn't gone anywhere. So there's no reason for us to come in and out of the trade. There's no reason for us to change our mind. We have our plan, we have our overall thinking, and the overall still looks upward. So I'm just going to hang on to this one, continue letting it play, and even if I happen to go to sleep, we have everything in place. We have quite a distance in place for our stop, so it's quite, quite well enough that we could wake up and be in a well enough spot. Let me see what time. Now, normally I would probably go to bed somewhere around let's see that's three o'clock so I would be somewhere in there going to bed let me make a mark real quick there I think somewhere in there and then I'll probably get up. Let's see what time was that. So I'd say probably about there. Uh, let's say we'll be getting up a few hours later. That's that. Let's say that's where we're planning to sleep. So we'll make that part fair. And play it forward. Let's see where we're going. It's always good to keep up with time as you're testing. So right now it's going in our favor. I'm going to let the trade continue. May pull back. Uh, may drift around a little bit. As long as it continues moving upwards in a general sense. Stays above this level. That's what we're looking at. This horizontal level. I'm not really trying to pull a trend line or anything like that because it usually takes the entire trend to be formed before you actually figure out what the real trend line was so uh, it's a pretty difficult game trying to guess the trend line just look at the level and observe right now we're kind of floating with that level and playing around with it a little bit and price hasn't really gone anywhere so let's go to sleep and see what happens the end of the sleep here okay so now it looks like it's starting to move against us so at this point let me just observe and see we don't want to just cut out just to cut out because it does still look kind of flat but it probably would have been the better idea to cut so we'll just leave that alone 
sell and take the small loss. And now we're just going to wait a moment and see for price to pull back where we might guess from next. So we have the next day. And we got a little bit of a level, a little bit here. Let's go and see what we got going. Yeah, probably would be good to take an entry from here. We're still continuing to move down. And again, stop loss just at the normal place. Set the amount and let it go. Now for profits, we're only down about 15, so we don't need much in order to get back ahead. But we may want to try to target here or a little bit further. So I'm going to set it down here at the next level below. And we're just going to observe and see where it goes. The price is still continuing to move down. We're just going to let it run in our favor. Starting to get a little bit of a consolidation. Maybe it will come back and retrace. It's still moving in a downward fashion. We should probably be asleep at this point, I would think. Yeah, I'm going to sleep. So let's move our slowly gauge there and go to sleep. See what happens. Are still moving in our favor? Getting a little bit of an action there. So right now it's still kind of in our favor, still moving downward, so we may decide to hold. We don't want to jump in and out rapidly multiple times as it's moving up and down. Starting to show formation rejection around where we entered. And now starting to finally go against a little bit, but then pop back down. So let's see if we get any. There we go. Now we got further rejection. Now notice, price came back to our entry multiple times, but we entered here for a reason. So we still have this little area that we were observing. Still kind of follows along the lines. It was a little bit inside. But overall, we're looking to come at that level there. Now, should price had gone up, we might have been closing out around this level. And that's kind of a bad idea, which means you could have even let it go a little bit further to see, which is why I like using these wide areas. So sometimes you run into these situations where you get in a little bit soon, or you get in a little bit off the level just because of what's happening in the market and what you're seeing. So this kind of allows you the room to make these different choices and decisions. And now we're just gonna continue. We had a major fallout and bam, there's the target. So the win actually took us up quite a significant amount to cover the loss and give us some profit. So that's the entire purpose and idea of the way I'm trading. So we can go ahead and look at another trade set and see what happens. Just understand that Every so often, you may get a losing streak that will bring your balance down. But by following the principle of trying to collect more in the gains than you do on the losses, then ideally, no matter what, you have the advantage of coming out ahead statistically over time. Over time is the key part. So we're looking at several trades all at once. We're not looking to pass a challenge account in one trade. We're not looking to do it in three or four. It is a process done over time. If you are making $1,000 in one trade, then you are risking $1,000 at the same time. Just like you make it, you can lose it all the same. So just keep that in mind. Everything is dollar for dollar, one to one in the market. And I'm still thinking that this is going to drop down so let's play forward and see if price will come up for us. Or if it's just going to continue plumbing. I would not try to take this because of the sharp downward. I would think probably not a good idea.
to take long because more than likely it might only come up to about here or so. It's very low that it's going to come all the way back or halfway back when you have such a strong plummet. This is about 35 or so pips. Uh, so based on experience, something you'll get over time with practicing, you'll start to pick up on these things and not catch the falling knife. So let's see if it'll come back. Now price kind of ramped up quickly and then now it's starting to hit some resistance right here in the bottom of this consolidation zone. So I am going to take another short at our same size. Notice I'm not recalculating. I have figured I'm risking 48 to $50 every trade and so be it. So now we are setting our stop at 50. If price starts to drift up around this line, I may wait and hold. Depending on how it decides to react around this area will determine whether or not I close. But ideally, I want to close here. If it just rips through and continues going, I could take a bigger loss. But notice we took a $60 win. As long as we're, in, you know, on average making more in our gains than our losses, these can vary by quite a bit. It's the average at the end of the day that actually makes the result. Not one trade. Multiple trades will make the result. So it's always a good idea to look at your trades in groups, I would say at a minimum, in groups of 100. A lot of people will find it difficult to make that many trades sometimes or to look at that many trades because so far notice we're already two days into the testing. We've been to sleep twice and we're about to have to go to sleep a third time. We've only taken a few trades. So it can be time consuming and this can wear you out over time uh, just by failing to keep your eye on the prize basically you have to understand that it's a marathon not a sprint so just keep your risk and your control of yourself fairly consistent make sure you keep it boring and keep it regular we are now asleep decided to go to bed price is going to do what it's going to do zoom on through it see what happens Cannot act on it while it's inside the blue lines. Because we are sleeping. We're not getting up for this. Alright, now. We're back up. Price is kind of near where we entered. It went flat. Curled back up a little bit. But now seems to be struggling in the morning hours. New York session for me. So I think I'm going to leave it on and see if it continues downward. Just making an educated guess. And if we get it, we get it. If we don't, we do not. And that's why we have our operating procedure for how we're supposed to handle ourselves in the market. So now I think price is starting to drift upwards a little bit. I'm going to take this off just because we're having a hard time going down. And I'm going to decide to take a long one. Let's move our sleepy time alarm. And I'm going to buy now at this point. Stop. Arbitrary. 50 bucks. And off we go. Now, same thing follows. We're looking to target more than we're going to lose if it's going wrong. Or starting to come back against us. Like in the case I just showed. Then we have the right to exercise early closure. We do not have to hold the target. That is a perfect ideal world scenario that will cost you money. Always remember that. Now we're just going to hold and observe. See we're getting some positive movement in our favor. And we're going to get into the fourth night of sleeping coming up here soon. Tokyo session now. Tokyo is usually a little bit slower. Although today it made quite a move on the open. I hesitated on entry, so I do not have an entry at the moment. But a trade is now moving towards our favor. And do we hold it or do we close it before we go to sleep? 
We're right back kind of where we entered. I think we'll just hang on to it. Sleep through the night. We're not waking up for this. Not waking up. Don't care. Can't do nothing about it. Okay, now we're waking up in the morning saying, dang it. But it looked like that support was holding out. Maybe not. Eh, will it come with us? Maybe not. We might have missed our opportunity sleeping. Those things will happen. No worries. It's only one trade. Let's continue going forward. See if we get that eruption again in our favor the next day. Starting to go back around. Let's see if it's going to hold out or if it's going to count against us. Still holding on, so we're kind of swing trading a little bit. Some trades may happen kind of quickly. Some may be held on to for quite a while. And we are now sleeping, so we'll see what happens by the time we wake up. It's very nice. It's gotten back above the level. Showing liquidity run. Pushing back up some more. Can we wake up to a nice good morning? And we can. And I would actually... Because it's near this top, I'm going to exercise my right to close early, and now we are ahead. So, notice in one, two, three, four, five days, we made $93, which is about roughly a 10% gain on the account. It's ideal. Uh, we didn't lose and we didn't get a couple of great wins, but overall we're making about $60 per trade, $45 to $60 per trade. And on loss, we're losing on average between about $15 to $25, which means we are doing better than one-to-one. -one. We are hitting at a roughly 50% hit rate. Sometimes you may get a few loss, a few more losses than what I did in this video. But it's all just an educated guess and what you think might happen. <laughs> Let's kind of play forward and see if we made the right decision. And it looks like we did. I might even decide to up short just for fun show you one more trade we'll see what happens hopefully it's a loss so you can see that as long as we're controlling our losses we still stay ahead of the game and then we just keep the pattern going are we getting the breakdown yes we're starting to get the breakdown we'll do some sleepy time Adjustments. And see if we can reach our target. Sometimes the price may move rather quickly. Sometimes it may not. It's like we're kind of getting stuck. Hard to say what we might do. There we go. Staying below. And we'll just go to sleep with our target on, see what happens. Price is still moving down, so there's no real reason to cut it anyway, even if we were awake. And I would say it's starting to struggle a little bit. Going flat, but I'll give it a little bit more time. And there was a reaction against it, probably in our favor. So we'll just hold for target. It was working towards us. Notice it ran up, but got immediately rejected back down. So that would show a strong sell pressure in the market. A wick, which usually I make my levels from. And let's line this up. And notice we're flowing with this other wick pointing the opposite way. Gives us a good key indication we're probably looking at a significant level. Uh, for more details on that, just check out the support and resistance level and use these levels just take your trades make a guess there's no indicators i'm using other than this calculator it's given us our size we figured it out one time and we trade with that size and gradually grew the account now if we lose a couple of times we could lose four or five times in a row and still be ahead of the game just by keeping control of our losses using that system let's see if i can get one wrong so if I was to buy this, for example, to see if it was going to go against us. I don't know if it is or not. We'll find out because I don't trade the New Zealand dollar often. But let's see if we can take a trade and handle a loss. Let's adjust our sleep time parameter. 
I didn't need to copy it, but there we go. That's where our next bedtime is. Because I say we got to get up and go to work. So we can't just stay up all night trading for 24 to 80 some hours. So now it's starting to reject back up. The next day we allow, we just opt to swing. And price disc is continuing to move down. So just like we did our other loss, let's see. So now, yeah, it really looks like it's going down sharply. So I'm going to cut that. And I'm not going to open another trade just yet. I'm going to wait until price gets near this line. So I lost a little bit. The market was going down. I took a guess it would reverse. It did not. So now I'm going to wait for price to kind of pull back up. Um, if you have a little bit to spare, you may wait to see if that trade will pull back up to close at a lower loss. But you want to close it really as soon as you kind of get the idea that you're going short. Now if we look at this, we went flat and we're getting steeper and steeper and steeper. We still have this wick showing downward pressure. And I would expect it to continue down until we kind of go flat again. So let's wait until price gets to a level. Let's see if it's retracing and... We're going to look for a continuation reversal, which will happen at typically one of these little spots here where price has rejected upwards and has now broken below. Just a basic support and resistance. And notice we didn't hang on to it. Had we waited, it would have been our maximum loss. We would have eventually hit that. But now I would probably guess buy because we haven't had a retracement and we're showing some effort to get back up. So I'm going to look for something like this. Again, set our stop around the $50 mark and carry forward. Let's see, I don't know if we'll get much out of Tokyo to come back on us. We'll see if we get a bounce. This one might cause me to actually stay up a little bit later for, but comes back in our favor, so I'll just say forget it. We'll wake up and find out in the morning. Because I would have to go to work, and I can't stay up all night watching the trades, which, like most people can't, they have jobs and such. So, yes, it probably would have been wise to close during sleep. So let's just close it out there. And take another small loss and see if we're going to get something else in our favor. I would probably guess it's going to just continue short. So let's see if it'll come up back around this line here. So we'll get back on our task of focusing for these levels to make sure we can maximize our chances. And close enough for government work. I'm going to throw one on. $50 for our stop. Just default. Don't care about points. Nothing else. We only care about is price going to go our way or not now. So off we go. Did I get too far ahead? I might have got too far ahead on that lines. No, I just moved them. Oh, big spike. So we were probably right to begin with. At this point, I'm going to clip that. Switch to the buy side because of the very strong reaction. $50 stop. And I'm thinking it might come somewhere back up here. So let's give it a go. I should have waited for the level. It would have been far more advantageous. But price is moved in our favor. Let's see if it's going to stay towards our favor. Waiting for sleep, but price is continuing. Now let's see if it stays up there by the time we get up. 
It may not be a, the worst idea to close it once we get up if it's up there. Yeah, we just slept too much. So now price is back. We'll give it a little bit more time as it moved up very strongly. I'm thinking that might actually kind of break down. Don't really look at trend lines too much, but we pushed down from that level above. Now we've come back down again. I would more likely expect a rejection off that level. So let's sell. Again, educated guess. I have no idea because I don't typically trade this one. I chose this one specifically so I would not say, hey, I remember that. So it's a fair shake of the thinking and strategy so you would get as close to a live market representation as would be possible to make. So we'll say we're going to bed about then. And let's see what about to roll the day. So we'll go forward some more. Maybe we are correct. Wait, maybe we were correct before. Take the swap. Swing things over. Price is still kind of where we entered the trade, so nothing we can really do. Now it's starting to move in our favor and against us. Back to where we started. And on this one, uh, can we get something before we go to bed? No. So we are stuck asleep now. It's going to do what it's going to do. And we're just going to see what happens by the time we wake up. A little bit further and now it's moving in our favor so I'm gonna see if we can at least make it to the next level BAM take that trade and that would be great so now at this point I would expect to take a trade short from this level but notice our account went right back up after those couple of losses on one win and we're in great shape when one more and we keep moving ahead and it's just a repetition of that system over and over and over again just keep in mind, it will take a considerable amount of time sometimes for these trades. It's never good to jump in and out multiple times. You may only trade once or twice a day sometimes. You could open a trade here and end up sitting on it for two days. So uh, just keep in mind that, you know, it doesn't matter what time frame you're on. If you want to actually make a gain, you have to give price time to travel. So that's one key thing to remember, and we could just continue on, but this video would go forever. But that's essentially the idea and premise of working with it. Try it out in demo, do it on live price, kind of keep up with what's going on where in the world, pay attention to what's going on around you, and zoom out. You can't know where you're going unless you know how you got there to begin with. So that can in itself can oftentimes lead you in the right direction you're always looking for reversals if you're looking for a short in this example you would look for a reversal or a point of possible reversal such as this level we used and go short that's the basic gist of it and even though these levels kind of give you an idea of what's happening by noticing how price is using those levels, either above or below, that can typically indicate if it's going to continue down or if it's holding above, it may continue up. These are the most likely cases. Just give some distance, give yourself some room, and let your trade breathe. Don't try and cut it out real quick just because it didn't immediately go right to begin with. That's another topic for another video, so subscribe, leave a thumbs up if you got usefulness out of the video and if you have any questions or um, concerns or suggestions or anything like that just leave a note below comment below and I try to respond to every comment so for now that's gonna wrap it up and I'll catch you guys on the next one